The Pilgrim Life is brought to you by the Star Quest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. And welcome to Pilgrim Life Podcast, where we find the sacred in everyday life. And your wayward, weary pilgrims on this journey um, is uh, myself. You know, bad grammar and all. My name is Deborah, and then uh, my last name is Shaven. But you know, we're we're all family here, so we usually go by first names. And joining me as usual, my my pilgrim partner in life is Sandy. Hi everyone, and you're. If I mispronounce your last name, it's because you know I always do. It's a uh, Garazar, right? That I said. See, yeah, there's some accents in there that you know, okay. I'm just my my German tongue is not equipped. It it didn't come with the uh, programming apparently. <laughs> that's, that's foreign language. Go figure. You know what's exciting, though? I think Sandy and I finally got an actual email to go with this podcast, finally, which is great. So you can send us an email at pilgrim at uh, sqpn.com. I believe that's our that's our um, new um, email. Yay! Yay. Um, and, and again, we apologize for... The distance between all of these podcasts because life has been crazy and Sandy and I have had one of those years where, um, you know, good intentions um, to record have been delayed because of moves and illnesses and personal issues and just life in general. So we're trying to we're trying our best to keep you all informed. But God is in charge. God is in charge, and so we just... And we're not the such today. <laughs> we we are just um, just happy to be here. Absolutely. Happy, happy to be around. Um, so we're going to do something we meant to do, what, two months ago, which is we want to do our Chemin de Sanctuaire Part 2. Um, we want to finish our story, and we apologize. We felt like we left everybody waiting um, because, I, you know, we had to have you... Know, it's like a cliffhanger finale. Like we need to start the uh, new season in a sense, uh, because we have uh, we had so much that happened to us on that particular pilgrimage that we we only got as far as Montreal in the last um, the last episode we talked about it, and which is the starting point. And, but we have to talk about Montreal, um, which is why we're talking about it right now because. As we're recording this, and it's um, this prior in this week that we're recording this, there was a something that hit national news that really uh, tugged at our heartstrings um, because it was, if you saw the video, it was a priest who was saying mass at St. Joseph's Oratory in Montreal, where, you know, the, the place that I think is one of my favorite uh, basilicas ever. Um, he was stabbed by somebody while he was saying mass, and um, we were um, shocked and saddened by that turn of events. Fortunately, you know, the priest is recovering well, and, um, you know, no more, you know, no more damage, you know, was done. Yet, you know, my heart just breaks over the fact that um, someone, for whatever reason, would do this in God's house. Right, right. During the mass, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but yes, like I said, the no, you know, the priests had, I, I from what I read, was superficial wounds, stab wounds, and the and the gentleman was taken away and and um, arrested and and hopefully getting some whatever he needs to. Um, it was you know, police are saying it was not considered a terrorist attack. And it was an isolated act committed by one individual, whichever, whatever that means. But still, it was in our favorite place. It's in a, you know, it was in a holy place. So it's always sad when things happen like this in a holy place. Yeah. And you know what? Um, 
you know, in the part where the mass was happening, they broadcast that live every morning. And one of our fellow pilgrims, when we were doing the Shemin de Santoir, um, you know, has, you know, she attends, you know, that morning mass, you know, so we can just, you know, our hearts, you know, they go to her and all of the parishioners uh, because it's a very, very well attended morning mass. Yes, yes. So, um, but anyway, it, that, that place, along with the saint who was buried there, Brother Andre, actually is a good segue into what we're going to talk about today. Um, with our day, it was, all, wow, we seem like we're, you know, one of those storyteller situations where we spend a lot of time talking about one particular place and then we gloss over like 12 other places. Um, but we're going to start with our day two of our sh our walk because it was a, because Sandy needs to talk about what happened to her that day. And I'll, I'll talk about, I'll start out with what happened to me because it's not nearly as thrilling, but a, ca a good cautionary tale for um, would-be hikers. So um, it was, uh, our hike that day was in a kind of a suburban area of Montreal along the St. Lawrence. And it was a beautiful day. And Deborah decided to hike in flip-flops for the first time in her life, the entire time. And by the time it was humid and hot, um, and then I hiked, I think, two kilometers in the wrong direction because, you know, my directions are in French. And then I had to, you know, hike two kilometers back um, and then across this huge public park. And by the time I got to um, the... Um, Church of St. Anne de Yeauville, which I know I'm mispronouncing. Um, it is actually her final resting place. So she's, you know, the, the good nun, she's, she's laying there in her final resting place, you know. So I, I actually texted my brother, um, like, you wouldn't believe this. I'm sleeping like 600 feet from a, you know, a saint um, who's, you know, dead. But <laughs> needless to say, it was kind of like, ooh, this is really kind of cool because, you know, we slept in her museum, basically. And when I got there, I was in such, I was sunburnt and dehydrated and my feet were like little sausages. And it was, I was in so much pain. I, I just couldn't do much of anything. And, um, but it was a glorious day of hiking. Like I remember it being so beautiful and it was a Saturday. So everybody was out and fishing and, you know, enjoying the weather and it was good. And, uh, you know, it, so when I got to the uh, little museum, <laughs> I remember like, cause I'm always like an hour, maybe two, three in front of Sandy. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, you know, head down, get it done, get there and, you know, don't stop and, and, um, and relax very often. And that's just kind of who I am. Cause you know, when we walk, we all walk at our own pace and our own rhythm and whatever works best for us. And there are so many times that I've stopped and like people are like, stop and rest for a little while. And once I stop and rest, I am no good at all. Like I can't, it takes an hour for me to get back in my, my groove. So it, it disrupts my groove. Um, I feel like that's a quote from a Disney movie it threw off my groove. Anyway. Um, so I was, the, the, this was our first night of a hot shower in two days. So I remember the shower was so tiny, but I sat, I couldn't even stand up in the shower. I had to sit at the bottom of the shower and just like lay there because <laughs> my, my legs hurt that bad. So when Sandy found me, I had my feet up in front of the, you know, and, and just waiting for her to arrive. And she had such an amazing story. She's like, oh, you won't believe what I, she, she goes down to this basement of the place we're staying. You won't believe what we, what I, what I have. And she had, she brings a couple things out of her bag. And, um, one thing is, um, a, a little green vial, which she'll get to. She'll tell you that story. And the, the second thing she brought was a turtle. And I'm like, that's, that's mine. That's my turtle. <laughs> and it was a, like a brass turtle ashtray. So, um, Sandy can start telling you what, what happened that day, um, with the little green vial and the turtle. Um, well, like, like Dev said, you know, every, you know, like you said, everybody kind of walks at, at their own pace. Um, I don't have a pace. Um, for me, it's stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. 
uh, maybe linger a little bit longer. Yeah, whatever. You know, I'm never in a hurry. Um, you know, I I talk to people. I stop and I listen to the birds. And it's like, oh, my God, you know, I'm always in wonder of God's creation. So as we're walking, um, you know, to, you know, to our next um, stop, you know, over at the sanctuary of um, St. Margaret the Uvil, uh, I was actually, and please, please forgive me. My French is worse than atrocious, but I do try, you know, I do try. Um, so we're, you know, it's like I go through this beautiful town, just gorgeous. Uh, the name is Bosherville. Yes. And, you know, I'm just, yeah. And so, you know, I mean, the town is charming. It's beautiful. The gardens, the, the flowers, the plants. I mean, the day was absolutely extraordinary. So I, you know, I walked by this house. And there's an older, you know, lady over there. And we just, oh, you're a pilgrim, blah, blah, blah. We kind of start talking. And then, um, you know, she invites me, you know, into her home and, um, you know, introduces me to her husband, you know, introduces me to a neighbor that is, you know, having, a, you know, a garage sale. You know, and we kind of start um, talking about, like, what has led me to, you know, to be a pilgrim. Not, you know, just uh, in my personal life. Um, and so she said, I have something for you. She said, wait. So she brings this like little green bottle. And she said, um, she said, when I was young, and mind you, this lady is in her late 80s, um, possibly even like early 90s, but in amazing shape. And she said, when I was very young, she said, I was sick all the time. And my mother went to Montreal and spoke to Brother Andre, you know, that I was constantly getting sick. And she said, um, and Brother Andre told my mother that by the time I got home, that I would be okay. And, um, and for her not to worry. And she said, I want you to have this. And I'm like, no, 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 can't do this. Can't do it. And she's, and she's going, you're not going to know what to do with it. And I'm like, no, I can't take this. You know, this is for your family. You know, this should be with your children. You know, it's like, I cannot possibly take it. She insisted. Right. So I'm just like, my God, you know, it's like, holy cow, what am I supposed to do? I mean, I, if, if you recall, you know, it's like, I was a mess, you know, that, that I was just like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? So, um, about an hour, an hour and a half, two hours later, it's like, my legs were killing me. My feet were killing me. And it wasn't like anything that I was like struggling with. I mean, I had my proper socks, I had my boots, you know, I wasn't carrying any kind of extra weight, nothing like that. And it was just like, I kept slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and slowing down. And I'm like, okay, well, so uh, uh, this is kind of bizarre. And when I got there at the sanctuary, all of you guys had showered, you know, you were smelling beautifully. You know, and everybody's like all freshened up. I mean, hurting and whatever, you know, and as you, your clothes were dried, you know, mine, I had not even started, you know, to like wash my clothes. And, um, you know, and so it's like, I pull up, you know, the, um, I pull up, you know, the, uh, the turtle ashtray, um, you know, which was given stuff up to me. And I'm like, this is like totally dubs, you know, like this is supposed to be for her. And I got, you know, the vial and, you know, I, I shared it and stuff up with you. And all of you guys were like, what? You know? <laughs> um, so, you know, I kind of started like passing the oil around, you know, and just kind of putting it in the areas where everybody was hurting. And, you know, we were saying a, a little, you know, prayer of, um, you know, of gratitude. And then of course, you know, it's like, we're like, we're too tired to cook or, go out or anything and so we went out and we ordered a pizza 
uh, for dinner because all of us, you know, obviously we were pretty tired. And then I went out on a quest from God, if you will. And I'm like, okay, I got to find a pharmacy. So I find a pharmacy and I find, lo and behold, of all things, Dr. Beal's lavender salts so that we could put our feet in. And it was like, oh, my God, this is like brilliant. And then, of course, you know, they also had wine. So I had to get wine and bring it back. And, um, you know, and, in the, you know, and after, you know, I shared the story and, and all that. Um, it was like one of those things that it was, I mean, I was still really troubled by the fact that I had been given this vial. Now, before I get too ahead of the story, I just want to mention that it seemed that um, I kept encountering people throughout the Shemin that had been praying to Brother Andre for one reason or another. Either, you know, that it was like they were asking for a sign, they were looking for for hope, they were looking for, you know, the, you know, the feeling of not being abandoned. Um, they were they were holding on desperately, um, you know, including, you know, the wife of um, of this man who. I happened to meet uh, that was suffering from cancer. And it was one of the most powerful moments of my entire life. And as you know, as, as we kind of keep talking about it, you know, I'll let you, you know, know more, you know, more about it. But it was, I basically did not do the shaman. Uh, it, it appears that I did not do the shaman for myself as much as I was Brother Andre's. Um, UPS delivery, <laughs> delivery delivery service. Well, you know, and and here's the thing about pilgrimage in general, and you find it with the same with the Camino, with with um, any pilgrimage you undertake. It usually it's not until the thing is over do you look back and go, oh, and you kind of see like you know in the rearview mirror like what you were supposed to see, what you, what was going on. It all pieces together. It takes months, I think, in some instances or years even to be like, oh, that's Okay, so you know, and I I find it funny that both Sandy and I had two di very different missions, walking the same pilgrimage. So hers was one of healing, and I got to witness that. And then that was my pilgrimage was one of witness and um, of uh, recording. And you know, like I said, I wrote a book about it um, because I think that was, you know, we joke about um, because. We joke that every day I would have a saint of the day, like a saint would appear and not appear like, Woo, you know, but like uh, become, a, I'd become aware of a, a particular saint and whether or not they were Canadian or not. And that was my mission was like, yeah, like 18 days, 18 different saints. And I'm like, where are these people coming from? Well, heaven. But I mean, you know, it was it was fun. It was, it was like, who's going to show up today? And, you know, and I have some fun stories about that. Um, like, you know, my, my two favorite ones, I, I don't know how long we're going to talk about the Shaman. Can I, I'm going to go ahead and, and tell one of my favorite saint stories and we'll get back I, to the I, other Andre. Absolutely. Because, uh, I remember, um, we were joking about on a particularly hard day and it was like, I think the worst day for me um, it was the day where my feet were just aching from day one, and it was like a 99% humidity and 100 degrees out. And and we got to St. Anne something something, I can't even remember. And this thunderstorm from out of nowhere, just like, you know, it's like torrential rain, humidity, it was horrible. And we got to the place we we're staying and there was no shower. And um, my feet were a mess and I was just not in a good place. So we went to bed on our little air mattresses that night. And we're and we're joking like I wonder who's what saint I'm going to meet tomorrow. And so I had a dream in the middle of the night. And in my dream, it was like somebody held up a sign and and it said Saint of the Day. And I'm like, oh okay. And then they the sign changed to Saint Luke. And I'm like, oh is that my Saint of the Day? And they're like, yes. And then I woke up and I'm like, oh you know when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like kind of like I gotta re write that down so I remember it. I remember you know before you quote you know, but I did remember it. And the next morning I'm like, oh yeah, my my. My saint of the day is St. Luke. And I'm like, I don't know much about St. Luke. 
because, you know, he's not my typical saint. And so I Googled him. The doctor, the healer. <laughs> he's, he's also a patron of artists. So I'm like, please let me, you know, meet an artist. So I don't want to meet a doctor. I really I don't want a doctor. I want an artist because St. You know, St. Luke is the patron of artists. And um, that day I literally couldn't walk anymore. I think my blisters were so terrible that that I was done. I was done about, I don't know, you know, about halfway through the day. It was rough. And then you, it was rough. And then that night you spent like a good hour just popping blisters on my feet. I yeah. remember, mind you, I do have a reputation for being the best at taking care of blisters. <laughs> yeah. And I do care, I do carry quite a first aid kit. Oh yeah. Anyway, so um like I said, you know, um you know, Sandy was talking about the um Brother Andre um St. Joseph's oil, which is a I think a second class relic. So basically she gave you a second class relic, which is something a saint has used or um, you know, has physically touched or used. So um yeah, she gave you something very, very important. And um I witnessed you use it on several different people. Yes. So it was amazing. Yeah, I th you know, I think um I think the the my biggest struggle um honestly um was the fact that it's like why me? You yeah. know, I'm just like I'm temperamental, you know, I'm a total doofus. Um you know, it's 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 just like you know, why me? And and I remember, you know, talking with you, you know, about it, that it's like, I need to give this to somebody, you know? Yeah, like, I remember. I'm, I, I, I remember can't you have this. I was quite upset. I was. <laughs> and, and I was a little annoyed with you. And I'm like, I wanted to do that whole, like what they do in the movies where they shake the person and like, like slap them in the face and be like, snap out of it. And, and be like, you know, um, you know, we're not supposed to know why you, just do it. Yeah. Just shut up and do it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it was, you know, I think probably, you know, I think probably um, one of the hardest parts, you know, about like having it was like not knowing what I was supposed to do with it. But the thing is, is that I did not need to know. Right. It was like, it just happened organically. You know, it was, right. um, I don't know if you, do you remember the, Franciscan house where we stayed? Yes. Okay. So we were staying um, at this Franciscan house. Beautiful, 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 beautiful place. And, um, you know, beautiful chapel, beautiful church. And there was, you know, one of the caregivers. He was kind of like very closed and, you know, just kind of like grouchy and, you know, just like very kind of like standoffish. And, um, and it's like, I gave him the, the, you know, like the oil. And it was just like, he blessed himself with it, you know, kind of like start praying, you know. And then it was like, it was like smiling. And he showed me the house where like, you know, like, you know, where like the priest leave, uh, you know, where he used to live and where he was living now. And like the puppies that, you know, he had adopted that were abandoned. You know, and how he was like raising them, you know, and you know, and the pilgrims are like, now who are you? Like, what are you doing here? You know, and it was also the time, you know, where, um, you know, we met that woman who's that was actually in the same place. Yeah, and it, yeah, it was yeah, it's in the same place, you know, and it was like, um, you know, her son, you know, was very ill. Um, they had gone through unbelievable, like, hard times. Again, you know, it was like this tug in my heart. Give her the oil. And it's like, okay, God, you know, it's like, here I go. This is what you want. You know, and and it was like, the change was, like, incredible. Um, the, uh, the day prior, um, you guys, you know, were already, you know, at the, at the Franciscan house. And, um, oh, this happened in the, in the span of 24 hours and, right. <laughs> and you guys were already there and, you know, there was like, I was nowhere to be found, 
you did not yep. know what happened. You know, it was just like, and you're, you know, you actually got this gentleman. And it's just like, my God, we got to go and find Sandy. Well, where is Sandy? Well, Sandy's sitting on a terrace, you know, happily talking to this woman and her friend. And <laughs> You know, okay. I'm, and I got a, b- a button here because I was just like, because, you know, Lisette and um, I can't remember the other one that was with her. They were getting all freaked out. It was like six o'clock and you'd miss lunch, dinner and where. And I'm like, don't worry about her. This is just her. Don't. She's just pokey. Just let her do her, you know. And by seven o'clock, I'm like, yeah, maybe we should go out and find her. Yeah. <laughs> and and then um, so we we um, piled into the um, same guy you were talking about before, yeah. the innkeeper his his uh station wagon and we we went backwards ar- along the path and didn't see you and i said stop at this restaurant in the the town you know before and there you were with your busted knee talking to i think americans <laughs> no 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 they were actually canadians and oh, okay. uh and the woman that i was talking to had actually recently gotten out of a, of a very, very bad, abusive relationship. And she was like at her wit's end, you know, like trying to find an answer. And she had been, you know, praying and praying and praying, you know, to Brother Andre. And, you know, and it's again, that tug in my heart. It's like, okay, here I go. And so I told him the story about the oil. And it was like, she started crying. It was like, she couldn't believe it. You know, and she's like, oh, it's like Brother Andre, you know, has like listened to my prayers. And he's like, yeah, that too. You know, it's it's like, um, you know, I don't know what the oil meant, but obviously it meant something pretty big. And, you know, to her, I don't know what her prayers were. And then um, her friend, who was being very, very supportive, was actually telling me a story that he was in Rome and, you know, they had gotten tickets, you know, this is during John Paul II. And it was, it was a special occasion. I do not recall what the occasion was, but he said, you know, that it was, the weather was very hot. So he went to St. Peter's and um, he was wearing a white suit, you know, because it was just like so hot. And, you know, in the summers in Europe can be pretty brutal you know, uh, for those that have traveled up there. And nobody is supposed to wear white except for the Pope. And uh, he told me the story of how John Paul looked at him and smiled, like cracking up, you know, (laughs) over the fact that, like, obviously he was there at Mass and very, you know, like a very devoted Catholic who had no clue that he was not supposed to wear white in front of the Holy Father. The po- mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he said, you know, it's like, what well, was one of the greatest moments for him? And again, you know, it was like, you know, he had been praying, you know, to Brother Andre. He was also dealing, you know, with like a lot of issues. And, um, and it was just like, it was like this ray of sunshine, you know, when they saw the, the vial. Now, what's interesting is that if you recall, is that the vial, it seemed like it wasn't, it it didn't seem like, like, like the oil was going down on the bottle at all. It it just, you know, just seemed to kind of like stay at the, at the, at the same, um, at the same level, you know, in, in like the little vial. And so these are just like a few of the people, um, you know, that like I gave the oil to. And holy cow, honestly, God, I don't know how many people I give the oil to. But it was just like, okay, God, this is what you want. Brother Andre, I'm your UPS man. Woman. Woman. Person. Whatever. Yeah. Person. It, but, you know, that's the thing is like, um, it's time and time again, as as people of faith, as people who follow God and, the, you know, um, sometimes we don't or not even aware that we're being used as a as a pencil in god's hand as mother Teresa would say or as a tool for the holy spirit because there are times where like i'll have talked to a friend or whatever and um they'll tell me later it was because of what you said and i'm like 
what did I say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Remind me because I don't remember. I sincerely don't remember what I said to you. So, and, and, and it's probably fair enough that I shouldn't remember because it wasn't meant for me. It was, it was a message, you know, for them. And, and you know what? I think that, you know, I'm a chatterbox, you know, and I walk slow and, oh, I just kind of go about my merry way, you know, and I know that um, it can be tremendously annoying. And believe me, it can be very annoying that it's like, come on, come on, Sandy, let's go, let's go. Mom, let's go, come on, let's keep walking. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, that it was just that, um, you know, what many consider a defect of character over the fact that I'm like so chatty and social and whatever. It was that, de- it was that defect of character that God used it for a higher good. Right. And I did not realize it at the time. I'm realizing it now. Yeah. Right. And you know, that's the, again, back to that whole, you really don't understand, you know, what you're supposed to learn on pilgrimage until you get back and, um, one of my students, I ran into her like uh, a couple weeks ago, a couple, yeah. Um, and um, I said, so, um, you know, post, post Camino, like six months post Camino. I'm like, so uh, have you started to kind of understand why you were there and what, you know, what you were supposed to learn? And she's like, I'm still unpacking. You know, every day I, I unpack a little more. And, you know, she's not saying figure or, you know, literally like I'm unpacking my bag still. No, she's unpacking all of those things that, she was supposed to have learned in that experience and you know and i i still unpack stuff occasionally too yeah and you know what it was like one of the one of the uh the cool things though about being on pilgrimage is that um you may not understand everything that happened you know like after you finished it um a lot of the lessons and a lot of the understanding happens sometimes years into the future you know right. um and it's like the every time that you take a pilgrimage um the pilgrimage has a tremendous amount of lessons that you have absorbed and as you continue on with like your life you know god has this way of saying okay you're at this part of your life you might have this blessing you might have this like struggle let's unpack this part of your pilgrimage, you know, and it just like, it empowers you. It gives you hope. It gives you strength. Um, it gives you a sense of, um, acceptance, gratitude. And it's like, and sometimes more often than not, it's a really good kick in the behind (laughs) on the part of God saying i have not abandoned you it is you that has abandoned me i'm back ask me for what you need oh what a good letting letting lesson there slipped right in there (laughs) come back yeah yeah and it's and it's um no but i mean seriously you know is the is it's one of those things where god has this amazing way of bringing the pilgrimage to the fore, you know, and going, I'm here. I'm your father. I love you. You can talk to me about anything. You can get mad at me if you want, you know, and it's, and, you know, I was just telling my daughter who's 32, uh, uh, yeah, 32. And I was just kind of telling her, I said, um, this happened yesterday. As a matter of fact, I said, um, I said, honey, I said, do you remember, I said, when you were little and you would either get hurt or you would get in trouble, you know, and mom would hold you and mom would tell you that it would be okay. Or maybe mom might chastise you, you know, for whatever and stuff up your head. But you knew that everything was going to be fine. And, uh, and I said, and you trusted me, right? And she said, well, yeah. She said, you always made everything better. And I said, so if a tiny little person like me can make that happen, imagine god you know and she said is that the reason that like you're so happy and i was like yeah you know it's like you know it's like he's my father he's my love 
he's my homie. I trust him. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, you know what? On that note, <laughs> let me be a buzzkill. On that note, yeah, we're going to um, actually, we're going to make a part three for this because we're not even halfway through talking about um, something remarkable. And I want to save time for that. Um, that happened a day or two after that, um, after the busted knee and, and um, all of this uh, oil, like the midway point of our, of our journey. Cause it was, um, I, for me, it was a, um, a gift. And I want to, I want to leave that for our third part, which we're going to record very, very soon, maybe even, um, right after this so um, until then we are going to leave you hanging dun, dun, dun. we'll leave you hanging um, and we'll finish with part three of our uh, Shaminda Sanctuary um, series and until then we will say Buen Camino Buen Camino and remember find the sacred in everyday life <laughs>